G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Metal Cut Signs and Designs, and welcome to part four of our video series, How to Build a CNC Plasma Cutting Table. And in this video, you'll see that the uh, support table, I guess you'd call it, is, is finished. Um, and this is what the, the two Y rails will sit on. There's a cross member at the front and the back. And then on top of that will be the gantry trolley with the X axis and the, the, the Z hanging in front of it. So I just want to talk briefly about the support table. Now this is constructed from 50 by 50 by 3 um, box tubing. Probably a little bit of overkill. I tend to tend to overbuild things. But it's as you can see, it's 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 diagonally braced in all, off all four corner legs. Um, the cross rails have got I guess you'd call these spaces between them. And you've got to remember that not only is the, you know, there's not a lot of weight in the, the frame of the, the, the plasma cutter as such, but the water table that sits inside here, now this water table is going to be 1600 by 1600 by 100 mil uh, deep. So that works out to around about 250 litres of water and a litre of water weighs a kilo so there's 256 kilos of, of water sitting on top of this frame. So you need it to, to be fairly sturdy and um, it needs to support that weight with ease. Now the other thing I've done too is I've put levelling feet on the bottom and the idea of those is that this is actually sitting perfectly level now and we've, we've levelled it to, to get it right. But this is not going to live here permanently, it's actually going to go in the other half of my shed which has just got a new concrete floor and we, we're, we're a bit early yet to actually get this in there. Um, so at the moment I'm just setting it up here. So this gives us the ability to be able to move it and then level it and then just adjust the feet accordingly. Okay, so from here the next thing to do is I'm just going to mock it up at the moment because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fix the rail. So I'm just going to put the two Y rails on here. Um, I've then got to measure the exact dimension inside the two Ys, which I believe is 1600 and it should be, but I just want to double check that. Make that cross member and I'll just show you how it's going to mock up and look sitting on this frame. So this is how it sits. You've got your two Y rails on the side. You've got your gantry trolley as I call them. Okay, we're minus the linear rail and the bearings at the moment. Um, and then this is your X axis sitting here. And on the front, if you remember from the previous video, uh, you've got your two linear rails here and your Z axis unit sits here, torches in front. So yeah, this is, this is how it's gonna look. Now, as I said before, I've just got to square this up, get it dead square, clamp it, measure that inside edge, measure that inside edge, make the cross member to fit, and then from there, we'll start to assemble the, the rails, put the, um, the ball screws on, and actually get this, this whole trolley moving up and down this frame. So uh, I'll get on with that now. Now that I've cut the front and rear cross members to size, what I've done here is I've made a plate, welded the nuts on the on one side of the plate and I've drilled through oh, drilled through the side of the both Y rails and the idea now is that so now what I've got to do is just bring this in a line because uh, I've moved the Y rail out so then flush these two both sides and I'm going to weld this plate here to the edge of the cross member and before I'll do that I've just got to line everything up and then I'll, I'll tack it and so now I've fitted both cross members in place, I've clamped them, I've gone back and clamped the two Y rails, I've measured the diagonals, the diagonals are within inside a millimetre of each other, so I'm very pleased with that. So now all I've got to do is weld the plate onto the cross member and I'll, I'll tack that into place on three sides and I'll pull them out and weld them properly. Well, I've now welded the plates to the cross members and bolted them in. Uh, I've just got to put spring washers under these bolts. But as you can see, it fits quite flush. I've just done the diagonals again, and I've got one millimetre difference on the diagonals over 2,547 mils. I think one mil's not going to be too much of an issue with, with being square. All right, so the next thing to do is... Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to secure the top pit to the to the actual support table. I'm thinking maybe just some tabs, weld a tab on there and, and bolt it through here. 
probably in a couple of places all the way around. It's not going to go anywhere, but I think it's just sort of peace of mind, really. So uh, after that, it'll be a matter of assembling the x-axis, putting everything on, fitting the stepper motors and the ball screws down the side, and we can get this thing moving up and down. So that'll be, uh, that'll be coming up shortly. Well, as you can see, the table's been painted. I've also moved it from the um, shed where I built it and I've put it into my new shed, so this is where it's gonna live permanently. It's mobile from a manual perspective, so if I can just show you this, the, the, the gantry moves up and down. I've just got the drive brackets disconnected at the moment. The uh, Z-axis can move up and down along the, the X carriage and uh, that's moving quite freely. I finally worked out how I was going to connect the whole frame to the support table and I went with these metal tabs that I welded onto the support table and drilled and tapped a 10mm bolt. As you can see I've done that in two places on each of the four uh, sides so this thing is not going to go anywhere and I'm confident that it'll be as sturdy as I can get it. So that wraps up part four of the video of um, how to build a CNC plasma cutting table. I'm really pleased with the way it's come together to this point. And in the next video, we need to wire up the homing switches, the over travel switches, and also the stepper motors for the X, Y, and Z uh, axes. There's homing switches on the front corner, and also there's a homing switch here for the X. There's also over travel switches on the back, and I just happened to make a bracket. I'm not quite sure I'm gonna put that one yet. That's gotta go there. So that's the next thing to do. So in part five, we'll be wiring up, mounting the box on the side, and we should get to a point where we should be able to make some test runs and have the software driving the torch and the whole bed assembly under its own steam, driving it around the, the table. We do still have to make a... <laughs> magpies in the background. We still need to make the water table and I'm not quite sure of the dimensions yet. I'll, I'll design that water table once we know the full travel of the torch because it will start in that corner but it won't go to the full extent of this side. So I've just got a few things to sort out there but we'll build that in a later uh, session. So if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button's down here. If you haven't caught up with the previous three videos, I'll put a link uh, here somewhere and if you'd like to go back and watch the other ones you can see the build from um, part one where we discussed what a CNC plasma table was, we talked about what a plasma cutter did um, and then part two we looked at the electronics and then in part three we looked at assembling these uh, X and Y axes and seeing what we used in terms of ball screws and linear rails and, and the like. If you have any questions or comments regarding the build so far, please put them in the comments below. I'll surely answer all your questions. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.